I don't know about you, but I'm having fun. <laughs> gets me out of the house, gets me off the computer, gives me a chance to sit down and smell the roses. You know, that might be an idea. I've been wanting to get some roses for this porch. Although this isn't a typical California, or this is a typical California porch, but it's not one that I have the freedom to grow things the way I want to. But that's okay. We can work that out. But one, one rose bush. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. Let me surprise her. <laughs> oh boy, that ought to be interesting. Speaking of surprises, God always has something in store for you. You know, that was one of the things that I started off early in my walk with Jesus was to look for and expect something new and different from God. He never let me down. <laughs> sometimes it was very unexpected. Sometimes it was a joy. Sometimes it was a stretching time. To prepare you for the day and to make each day easier on both of us, God gave us not just his word to study and to read and to live and to <laughs> change our mind, change our heart, change our soul, change our being, cause us to think about and meditate on and dwell on and walk on and learn from and be all those things that the word describes itself to be that we should put into our lips and have on our foreheads and the frontlets between our eyes and go on and on and on and on and yada yada yada. But also God gave us devotional so that we could just kind of chill out a little bit Take one and kind of check it out and see how it fits. So, maybe this fits for you. I know it does for me because God is talking. In my emotional, he's always talking to me. A spiritual rule. Hot furnace, cool chimney. Now we have received the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 1 Corinthians 2.12 In our Christian fellowship, two opposite dangers are to be recognized and avoided. They are the cold heart and the hot head. <laughs> For downright harmful effects, the hot head is often the worst of the two. The human heart is heretical by nature. Unless well instructed in the scriptures and fully enlightened by the indwelling spirit, it may confuse the fervor of the spirit with the heat of the flesh and mistake the scintillations of the overheated imagination for the glow of the true Shekinah or Shekinah. It may be said without qualification that there can be never, it may be said without qualification that there can never be too much fire if it is the true fire of God, and it can be said as certainly that there cannot be too much cool judgment in religious matters if that judgment is sanctified by the Spirit. Among the gifts of the Spirit, scarcely anyone is of greater practical usefulness in these critical times than the gift of discernment. The spiritual gift should be highly valued and frankly sought. Human sweat can add nothing to the work of the Spirit, especially when it is nerve sweat. The hottest fire of God is cool when it touches the redeemed intellect. It makes the heart glow, but leaves the judgment completely calm. Let love burn on with increasing fervor, but bring every act to the test of quiet wisdom. Keep the fire in the furnace where it belongs. An overheated chimney will create more excitement, but it is likely to burn the house down. Let the rule be a hot furnace, but a cool chimney. You know, I think about that, and as I encounter so much now of these spiritual gifted people that come up and tell me all these things. I do see it as a chimney that's full of soot. You know, they've got all the actions and directions and motions and potions and inventions and imaginations of the spirit, but they have very little of the word. And you know, God wants both. God doesn't want us to be so, well, God wants us so spiritually minded that we're no earthly good because we're all earthly good if we are spiritually minded. But the things of the Spirit point towards the Word of God. They enlighten us and cause us to know His Word. Because Jesus said He would send the Comforter to us in order that we might know His Word and that it would inspire us. But, you know, I see so many people that want power or gifts or miraculous. And little do they know that the Comforter 
easily entreated. He is a gentleman, not just a fire that burns within your soul because you have these emotions that you can't control. Sorry, you can. Because in greater measure than what you may understand when you have the gifts of the Spirit and you're full of the Holy Spirit and you walk in the Spirit and talk in the Spirit and do all the things in the Spirit, that the reality is, is that God is a Spirit and God has the ability to create. God has the ability to destroy. God judges. God sees. God hears. But God said, look at Jesus. He is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit of God that Jesus said he would send would point to Jesus. So, when it talks about discernment, I think those who are led by the Spirit ought to exercise more discernment than concernment about condemning other people or practicing things that aren't edifying to the entire body of Christ. I would take every single person that's full of the Holy Spirit out of where they're at and place one in a congregation of dead people. I mean, spiritually dead. I mean, like, really spiritually dead. Like, maybe, who knows, a Methodist church that doesn't believe in the gifts, or a Catholic church that might not be charismatic, or some place where it would be obvious that a light is needed, because often the times discernment doesn't come when it's a bunch of people getting together and just whipping themselves up into fervor. Rather, discernment comes when it's knowing when to use your gift in the right and proper settings and situation to bring about the salvation of souls. That, to me, is true discernment. That, I feel, that A.W. Tozer, who wrote this, was trying to say to the body of Christ that was so getting carried away in the spirit that they forgot the word of God. Think about it. Ask God what he thinks. He'll tell you.